Hey guys, Lingo from Topaz, hope you're doing well. Today I've got a very different video for you. And we've also decided to do something slightly different. So today is Wednesday, the time when this is being recorded. And tomorrow we are unfortunately going to be going back to being locked down as a, in the UK, I mean. And um, we thought it would be a good idea to try to give you guys more video, more content, now that you're going to be at home a bit more. And so we're going to be releasing a video on Wednesdays and obviously the usual Sundays. So, today's video is going to be a Q&A. So a lot of people have been asking, Nabil, do a Q&A. We want to know a few things that you don't usually talk about uh, and a few questions that I'm not going to answer because some of them are really weird. But apart from that, <laughs> let's, let's uh, go through the Q&A. And I've got here my beautiful assistant, Thomas, a.k.a. Horsepower Hunters. His plug is here and um, and he's going to be reading out all the all the questions and yeah let's go okay. question okay. number one so how did topaz detailing start topaz detailing started uh well first started 2009 before that we had uh we were started detailing but it wasn't officially open so then we uh, it was a conception. The conception was that we wanted to have our cars detailed, and we were not able to get them detailed at the time because there wasn't any there wasn't anywhere that we could actually get the car detailed. And when we tried to do that, the quality was like rubbish. So we decided to uh, detail cars ourselves, and then from that it led to our friends asking us, "Can you detail my car? What can I do? What clay bar should I use? What this? What that?" And then we're like, no, we'll do it for you. This might be a good idea to set up a business. And then we did it. First car came in, it was friends' cars, and then the first customer car came in, and then one thing after another. And that's how it started. When did you start doing paint protection film, and how did that start? Mm, pay, okay, so paint protection film started. We used to have people come in and do the work for us, uh, paint protection film. And then we, we got to the stage where we were like, actually, we're doing quite a lot of it now and we want to have the control so we we're like we need to do it in-house and we need to start pushing the boundaries of what is acceptable so anytime we had a subcontractor come and do paint protection from film for us it was like yeah it's okay it's all right it's not a hundred percent the work is a bit mm. so we we're like do you know what let's start doing this ourselves and then uh, after a few times and i'll never forget this the first car i did was a, a bonnet a 360 bonnet and that bonnet took me six attempts. <laughs> six attempts. Yeah, no, no one knows this. Six attempts to get it right. And I couldn't get it right. And I was just like, what is going on? What is this like sorcery? Why can I not get this bloody thing down? But then after, uh, yeah, after six, the sixth one I got right. The sixth one I got right. Yeah. So that's why we started PPF. What sets Topaz Detailing apart from other detailing and PPF businesses? I get asked this question a lot. Um, the first initial reaction that I want to say is the passion that we have for the brand. And the, the passion that we have, I think, for what we stand for. I think that's, that's a very important bit. You know, you can go into all the minute details, like our patterns being better, we, because we put the, you know, we extend them where we need to extend them, we design them to exactly how we want them, etc, etc, etc. You know, the film is made for us in a slightly different way and the way that we install is slightly different. There's so many different small little things that compile to a big difference. But I think a very important part is the passion of customer service for us. Because we want to make sure the quality is spot on, like it would be on one of my cars. And the customer service, the journey, the customer journey is there spot on as well. So I think there's a couple of things that, it's the DNA. It's hard to, it's hard to explain what it is, but I think it's the DNA. It's, it's our Topaz DNA. How many PPFs do you do a month? <laughs> how many PPFs? <laughs> Whoa, how many PPFs? What do you mean by how many PPFs? Like what an aspect, like how many- How, how many, many cars do you <laughs> paint protect a month? Okay, all right. Uh, we do on average about, in our London site only, we do between seven to 10 cars. Um, depending whether it's a full car, small parts, but most of it is full cars. But if you look at the average, about six or seven cars a day. So how much is that a month? I don't know. Get my calculator out. It's uh, a lot, a lot, a lot. What does it take to become a PPF installer at Topaz? Um, 
So we've we've had two ways of approaching this. We've initially we started um, basically getting people uh, who don't have any experience because at the time when we started the business with PPF business, there there weren't really anyone that knew what PPF was. It was a very very new market in the UK. There wasn't a lot of people that would understand what PPF was. wouldn't even know what a squeegee is. Um, the only uh, really known similar concept is vinyl wrapping. And whenever we got vinyl wrappers to come and do paint protection film, it never worked out well because the techniques are slightly different and they used to have bad habits that worked for vinyl that wouldn't work for paint protection film. So we started uh, training our staff up from scratch. So we have someone come in who really, I think the most important thing is your dedication to wanting to learn the craft, um, having a good, a good eye of de detail. Yeah, it, if you don't have a attention to detail, then forget it. You'll never be able to do it, right? And you have to be good with your hands. Uh, so that's why we, we, we actually started hiring people that were, you know, graduates from people, you know, from schools who where there's, you know, structural things. Like, what do you call them? Like molders or arts and crafts and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was like when I first got suggested the question. But yeah, so that's um, really dedication, keen eye and the willingness really to learn and go with your hands, that's what it takes. And if someone wanted to apply for a job at Topaz, uh, where would they apply? In, uh, so the best way to do it is email jobs with S at topazdetailing.com and then we've got our management team that look through that regularly. Do you have any big name clients that you can mention? The issue of what we do is the clientele that we have is um, most of them are very, very discreet and they're very private. So, and a lot of them I have to sign NDAs for. So people we've done work for in the past, I mean, you've got someone, you know, Jensen Button, we've got loads of F1 drivers that we do. Um, Horatio Pagani, we did, you know, loads of his private collection. Uh, we've got, I don't know, who else we've got? We've got Richard Hammond. Rich, yeah, Richard Hammond, of course. Um, Jamiroquai. Jamiroquai, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so so th there's there's a few celebrities that you would know, but we also deal with. Um, I mean, footballers. We do a lot of footballers' cars as well. Again, um, royalty as well. Ro yeah, royalty, royalty, uh, Malaysian royalty, uh, Brunei royalty, Middle Eastern royalty. Um, we haven't done British royalty though. That's that's one thing that we haven't done. Yeah, we haven't we haven't done a Queen's car yet. That's one car we haven't done. What is the most valuable car that Topaz has ever worked on? I can't say what that is. I, I, it, it, it's, that, it's that thing that was with us a few, a few weeks ago. That really expensive one. Yeah. I, so I'm sorry, I can't say. <laughs> how am I gonna say this? So we had a really expensive car. It was in the millions. That's how much it cost to buy. And um, so that was, yeah, a very expensive car to buy new. And then we've had, I mean, we've had 250 GTOs in. That would probably be the most expensive car we've had in the workshop. That's, you know, 40 million plus. I'm How liking the questions, good questions though. Good questions. How do you design templates for PPF? Sure, I'll tell you all our secrets uh, and then you can go do it. I'm not gonna answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> no, but anyway, in, in all reality, it's um, we have a, a lot of techniques. So we started off with so many different types of techniques to try to uh, pattern PPF cars or pattern P pattern cars. Um, at the beginning, it was totally different. We used to use tracing paper, and we tried all different sorts. That just did, does not work. So we threw it out the window. And there's a whole new way of doing it, which obviously I can't tell. Uh, I can't tell you exactly, but it's not. It's not a process that is an easy one to do, and it takes, it probably costs between six to 10,000 pounds per car, if you look into consideration of how much, you know, lack of production there would be for that person to do the work, the cost of the materials that we use, the time for the designers to actually do it. It's, it's a lengthy process just to do one car. So for most people, it's, um, if you're not doing high volumes like we're doing, uh, and we have international sites, then it's not really worth patterning your own cars. I don't think it is. That's my opinion. What brand or brands of PPF do you use? 
So we have, uh, we were using Expel and Suntech. Th those were the two brands we were using. Uh, we now have film that's been made for us. That's going to be launching for our partners across the world. Um, so, uh, and I can't say where that's, where we're getting that from, but it's uh, it's a company in the States, which is obviously the best film comes from the States. Uh, and yeah, we're looking forward to that because that's going to be, uh, I think, something that's going to look very, very good on what we want to, and how we want it to look like, you know? <laughs> like the phone ring. It's, it's always going to be some noises being done, right? Yeah. Like it's like, <laughs> the uh, phone is yeah, annoying. annoying uh, go on, go tell him off. Oh no, I'm on the bloody screen again. <laughs> go on, Daniel, answer the call, mate. Don't you want any commission? What is the most bizarre customer request you've had? We've had a request, this is an easy one to answer. We've had a request from a customer who wanted to have only his cars in our premises at once. Yes, it's a random one. It was literally, the, the customer wanted to have um, all our bays, the whole workshop, uh, only with his car. So he essentially wanted us to shut down for anyone else and just for his cars to be in our premises and for us to be doing work only on his cars um, and to video it and photog you know, put the photos on it and stuff like that. That was the weirdest request we've had. And did that happen? No. <laughs> because it was physically impossible. I mean, it was so hard to do. You can't, you, you can't, it, we would value all our customers. So it's hard to say, you know, to all other customers, no, because. Which is a favorite car that you've worked on? Um, so many, so hard. Do you know what I think? Two hours later. Uh, modern, more modern cars, I'd say the Devo's been one, one that's up there. Um, that's, that's definitely uh, one of the ones that's been my favorite, more, more recent cars. But I think, genuinely, I think the most, the, my favorite was the, and I don't remember if you remember this, but it was the, Pagani 760 uh, manual with what's it called the what, what's this like it's the one that's on the we've got a picture with that that with, with GF Williams did the AG the AG the blue carbon one blue carbon one yeah, yeah so the Pag so the Pagani Zonda 760 AG that was my that was my favorite so far and I know the owner but he won't sell it to me and I can't afford it. So there's two, uh, two problems there. <laughs> Which new car are you most excited to have in the workshop that you haven't had yet? Um, I think from a new car perspective, I would probably say, it hasn't been launched, does that, can I say it, has, it hasn't sure, been launched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the 4x4 Ferrari. Yeah, random, I know, really looking forward to that. I want to see what it's going to look like. I love my four by fours. I'm always been I'm always been in Range Rovers or Cayennes and stuff. So I want to see what that one's going to be like. What car or cars do you own at the moment? Uh, my issue with cars. So I had quite a few at one point, and then I just started selling them because I had nowhere to go. Number one, and number two, with kids, young kids, there's no way you're going to be able to drive a two seater because the fights are just ridiculous. Like I want to get in. I want to get in. I want to. Get in. So then, so then I decided to uh, downsize a little bit and uh, also the space in my garage is a bit limited. So currently Range Rover, daily car, love it, absolutely love that car. We'll get the new one when it comes out. Uh, GT3 RS, Wysak, uh, and then a cool, really cool color, uh, Iris Blue. Um, I have uh, a, well, yeah, we, we part own some other metal that's a bit heavier, but I can't say what it is. Um, yeah, SLR, SLR and uh, some other F cars and stuff like that. But I, I don't own it myself, so I can't say. Uh, that's, that's not. It's not fair to say that. It's not fair to say it's my car. And what about Maz? Maz owns G two RS MR, which you've seen everywhere. Uh, he owns a seven twenty as well. Which is uh, which he loves, um, and it's bloody fast because it's been tuned. That that's one of the fastest straight line cars, by the way, ever. Seven twenty tuned. It's it wants to kill you, but it goes like shovel. You can beep that out.
<laughs> and what else? He owns a G6, GLS 63. Uh, that he, that he, that, that's his family car. And uh, that's it. That's all he has. What fun other items? But fun, what, what fun items do we have in the workshop? Dodgy question. What fun items other than cars have you PPF? For example, tractors or bicycles. So bicycles, yes, we've done a few bicycles. Um, very weird to PPF because obviously it, the shape is very weird, but actually not too difficult. We've done loads of carbon bikes, yeah, bicycles. Um, you organised the uh, the tractors for us. JCBs. JCBs. That that's going to be cool when we do that. Uh, we were about to do the tractors, but then that didn't work uh, because of COVID and lockdown and stuff like that. Um, what else? What else did we do that was cool? Watches. PPF. I got PPF for my watch now. So watches as well. Um, it was the mirrors we did? Yes, we did mirrors. We did a a a piece that is by. I, I I don't know the details exactly, but it's it's uh it was in in the modern art museum. Is it modern art? Or is it no? Which one is it? Tate. Tate modern. The Tate modern. It was Tate modern. Yeah, it was in Tate modern, and it's like basically a massive, huge mirror, but made out of chrome, and it had separate pieces all the way through. We can like put a photo somewhere here. We put a photo of it here somewhere. And that was really interesting because we had, I think it was about 400 small pieces like this and they all compiled to one huge mammoth mirror. And that was a cool thing to do, so we PPF the whole thing. And then we did another one for them afterwards. Oh, and, and actually, we PPF a part of a nose of a, con a Concord. Yeah, we put some film on that as well. That was interesting, but you didn't know that. <laughs> I did not know. <laughs> so what's next for Topaz Decaling? Um, exciting times ahead. Really, really exciting times ahead. So, my business, my business, business, <laughs> business. So my business ethos has always been never rush into something, and whilst some opportunities come up in front of you they may not be the right ones and for whatever reason um, I think things happen for a reason and the right thing always comes in front of you and you just need to identify what is right and what is wrong so for me I've always thought grow organically as possible have the people with you to be able to grow because I can't do it by myself Maz, me and Maz can't do it on our own so you know, it's it. We need we need to have the right people with us to grow our business, and uh, the cool things that's going to happen next, international, international, Topaz International is gonna. It's here. It's uh, something that I've been. You know, it's, it's world premiere. I haven't talked about this. Uh, so something that I'm telling you guys now, and it's uh, really exciting. So we're opening up in three Middle Eastern countries over the next twelve months. So. That's going to be awesome. Uh, and we're also opening up in uh, part of Europe as well. Um, Switzerland's always been on the cards, but it's just so difficult to get things going there. Uh, but but now with we have a new partner who uh, really wants to push it. And so we're that's also on the back burner, but it's there in the background. So yeah, excited. But Middle East, imminent. Imminent. So I think that's it, right? Well, that's all that we have time for today. Um, Thank you so much for all your questions. I know there's a lot more questions that we were asked that we haven't had time to answer. Um, trying to fit this in a busy schedule is, is, is hard, but I want to do it for you guys because I think it's cool content for you to watch. Um, I think we're going to probably do another Q&A at some other stage because, as, as I said, there's loads of other videos, loads of other questions that haven't been answered yet. Um, but anyway, I hope you like this um, and uh, hopefully you stay safe in the lockdown and everything goes well on your side and hopefully your mental health is also kept intact because it's a difficult time for everyone uh, and uh, yeah, always you know go to the park, take walks, etc. Anyway, make sure you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for all your support and I'll catch you on the next one.